The Supreme Court recently gave PM Narendra Modi a clean chit in 2002 Gujarat riots. The special investigation team probing the case for fabrication of evidence for 2002 Gujarat riots conspiracy told the session courts that social activist Tista Sitalwad, along with two others, were behind a bigger political conspiracy for the dismissal and the destabilization of then Gujarat government. The team also told the court that they were working to implicate innocents like then Gujarat CM Narendra Modi. India has witnessed a couple of violent incidents and communal clashes in the recent past. But the question that often gets left out is who are the people behind this mayhem? Who sponsors these riots? Who are the people peddling this hate propaganda in India? Hello and welcome. You're watching Times Now Digital and I'm Akshat Khanna. And today, we try and connect the dots and also try to unmask that wolf in your skin. The country has witnessed a number of violent incidents and communal clashes in recent pasts. Notably, PFI's links emerged in most of these unfortunate incidents. Every violent incident arson leaves behind a trail of destructions that is later taken care of by taxpayers' money. Which is why there is a need to fix accountability for such blatant misappropriation of public finance. Such violence not only leads to loss of lives and damage to public property, it also jeopardizes the future of youth involved in these riots. So it is pertinent to ask a question that who are the real inciters? The investigation in Delhi riots brought us closer to the real inciters of this violence and also helped us to unmask the tactics which are used by them to create an atmosphere of anti-Modi. Few months back, India was hosting then US President Donald Trump when the riots hit the national capital and Hungarian-American billionaire George Soros' network was reportedly behind the engineering of these riots to create social disruption in India during an important diplomatic visit. But who is this George Soros? George Soros is a Hungarian-born American businessman and philanthropist. As of March 2021, he has a net worth of 8.6 billion US dollars, having donated more than 32 billion dollars to his organization, Open Society Foundations. And this Open Society Foundation is said to be the one that is financing violence in India. Soros has time and again expressed his displeasure over Modi government. In 2020, while addressing the World Economic Forum in Davos, Soros cited India as an example to illustrate the rise of nationalism. Soros's unsolicited comment on PN Modi had raised eyebrows. Soros has reportedly been instrumental in propagating anti-India government narrative in international press using his influence. Using his money and power, Soros efficiently peddled misinformation against this democratically elected government. Soros has reportedly shooting his gun from Tista Sitalwat's shoulder, who had been known to influence the protesters at Shaheen Bagh. George Soros's Open Society Foundation has been an international grant-making network is admittedly committed to defeating nationalism in India. Popular Front of India or PFI, which has been in the dock over Delhi riots, is also linked indirectly to George Soros. In 2015, the Gujarat government had complained to the MHA that Ford Foundation funded anti-India activities of activist Tista Sitalwad's NGO Sabram Trust and Citizens for Justice and Peace. It further requested that the FCRA registration of the two NGOs be cancelled. Interestingly, Indian agencies have managed to track and decode the nefarious motives of foreign hands. In 2016, the Modi government had put several NGOs under its watch list, including the one patronized by Soros. Now, this left one of the biggest foreign donors, Open Society Foundations, miffed. 
the NGOs were put on watch list following adverse inputs from intelligence. Now, this restriction was aimed at crippling those who had plans of triggering unrest in India. As per the restriction, the donors are not allowed to send money directly to NGOs or associations without MHA's nod. There are currently more than 20 donors who are under government scanner. The evidence suggests that foreign entities do have a role to play in the violence that India recently witnessed. India is gearing up to tackle such threats emanating from foreign lands with the help of intelligence agencies. Now, with India's growing clout and global community, will it be able to thwart such attempts? Well, only time will tell.